Hey guys, Basil and Will from Grayson Hobby, and today we're gonna show you how to make your awesome GT M3. Yes. Diatone even better. <laughs> you have no idea what this thing is. The damn name is so freaking long. <laughs> so a lot of guys were sending me messages saying, hey, the capacitor, um, well, what's this little bulb thing in the bag? And for those of you asking um, what this is, uh, it's basically, it's a it's gonna help clean up some of the video. If you're getting extra noise in the video from the speed controls and the motors and all that, um, adding the capacitor might help clean up the video a little bit. So we're just gonna do a little quick video and installing it and kind of showing it uh, like a kind of point of reference of how to install it or where to install it. Um, now, if you uh, guys are anybody's familiar with like the Baby Hawk R, for example, and just moving to a different product, it already has that capacitor. And you can see this thing's hanging out. It's kind of in the middle everywhere um, in the way. Uh, so we're going to do a little video showing you how to put it on the GTR, or on, on the GTM3. Sorry, there's too many letters in these names. <laughs> so we're going to show you how to install it in there to where it's not sticking out and in the way on the diatones. And for a bonus, if we get, this video gets 100 likes, Will said he'll do a video on how to install the receiver on this guy. It'll involve poking him with a soldering iron a lot. <laughs> he doesn't want to do it, but I'm making him. So first thing we got to do is unscrew the back plate. And I'm doing it this way. You could probably remove the whole cage completely if you did from the get-go, but I installed the receiver there, the wires are there. So in this case, I'm just going to take the back the levers, or little hatch part off. So I'm just going to lift these two up and out of the way for now. And that gives me enough room to get to the two solder pads we need. Okay. So then, second step is, now we gotta figure Ow! out- Ow! Don't touch that, it's hot. Guys, smell step. my skin burning? God. Anyway, <laughs> this made it better. Uh, um, so we're gonna wanna figure out now, as far as the wires, you're just gonna wanna see how you get do. I'm gonna run them about, mm, what is that, a quarter inch or so, you think? Yeah. Right. Cut it about yay long. What's that, yay? Uh, that yay long is that long. There you go. So, hey, look at reference. Uh, there you go. Something, I don't know. Okay. So we're just going to cut it, and you can cut the any length. Um, if you're not sure, start longer. But the side here with the gray and the minus goes to your negative lead. The other side goes to the positive lead. Okay, so the gray, the negative side is actually yeah. it goes in the black battery. And now this Terminal. is going to be almost impossible to show you guys in video because of the way I have to hold it. So, All right, so let's just say, we're going to tin the end to that, right? Yeah, which is not going to do much, but... All right, okay. uh, you're probably gonna want to come around behind right. me because there's no way I can do this backwards. Okay. So, and camera in the face. <laughs> I'm gonna burn you again. All right, so definitely clean your iron, and then. Yep, you're right. I can't see. Gonna get in here, and without frying the whole damn quad, we're gonna get it soldered. There's one side. I'll burn myself if it makes you feel any better. Yeah, I think it does make me feel better. So it's tight in there, huh? Yeah, it's really tight. And then, you gotta be careful with the wires for the ESC. This is, um, without taking it apart, it is kind of a pain in the butt. You gotta be careful you don't heat too much, because then you desolder the battery lead, and then, next thing you know, you're gonna have to take the whole thing apart, resolder it. But... Alright, well that was easy. Yeah, so the final results there, um, work slow. Again, if you haven't already mounted a receiver and everything, you could take the whole top plate off and gives you more room to work or with. Or if you haven't stripped the screws. All right, so what temperature was you, were you ironing at? Uh, this was actually at 340 Celsius, but I probably, had I realized that, I probably would have brought it all the way up to 400. So that's probably half the problem, right? Not really. It's, okay. Worst case scenario, you could put a little dab of flux on the wire and then flow the solder to it. would probably do a little better, but... So now the capacitor is installed, I actually had, because I cut it a little bit longer, um, remember measure twice, cut once, but I put it a little longer, I tucked it up in here and you'll see that it is not touching the flight controller, I have it spaced out from the flight controller and it's not touching the frame or anything like that. Yep, I see some space um, there. It's kind of isolated, that way it doesn't transfer any vibrations to the flight controller. Okay. Because again, we are using the 32K gyro, they are more sensitive, so you don't want to if uh, any way possible to keep things from vibrating on the flight controller, the better. Um, so this is tucked up in here. It's nice and protected from the uh, props or any like, debris or anything like hitting. So it's up in the frame. Um, so now we have the capacitor. And the whole point of the capacitor is to help clean up any noise in the video. So if you're getting any horizontal lines or static uh, or more noise in the video than you think you should, adding the little capacitor can help that. Um, but don't get that confused with bad 
video yeah, the channel. Wrong channel yeah. No. <laughs> um, but assuming you're getting noise in the video and all that, which can happen, um, you know, from you, time to time. You haven't noticed any in years, right? It's got a little bit, but not enough to argue about or okay. complain about. But um, now, before anyone asks, I noticed you have these two pieces of shrink tube, or mm -hmm. it looks like shrink tube. What is that? That's the antennas from the XM Plus. XM Plus. So our last video with the GTR90, we put the XM. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you put an XM in this guy? Uh, well, twofold. One, I had an XM Plus out of one of my other quads that I robbed it from. Okay. Um, that was an, on the rebuild table, but. This is a little bigger of a quad, and I do plan on flying this farther away, faster, etc., than the GTR90. Uh, so in this case, I did want to have the extra diversity from the uh, gotcha. from the XM Plus. And the XM and XM Plus installed the same? Yeah, they're exactly the Except same. Except for one antenna. The way they wire up, you just right. snip the factory lead at the end and then solder it onto the receiver. Um, now, you can absolutely you can use an XM. Yeah, it, it should be fine, but if you... I would say get the XM. Uh, if you already have one, use it. Uh, if you find that you're getting low RSI in some areas and all that, then switch it over. Or if you have range issues or right. anything like that. It's not much price um, difference between the XM and XM Plus. So. Yeah, I mean, but if you don't have a receiver already, might as well just buy the XM Plus. Right. Um, and what about and that, that, that new one, the RSXR? RSXR, that would work too. But it, not necessary, right? Well, not really. I mean, yeah. RSSI, you just flash the receivers with the RSSI on the OSD. Uh, or on the channel, so it goes to the OSD, and you right. should be good to go. So I mean, a $12 receiver versus a $20 receiver, basically. Yeah, because this has Betaflight OSD. You can do all the changes yeah. and all that through that. You don't really need the smart port. That's it. That video is done. So now your video is clean. So, so would you install on your personal quad? Is it, does it necessary? No, I didn't bother on mine. Okay. Um, it's one of those things. Uh, I'm not... Now, why, if, you didn't need, if you don't think you need it, why do they in include it? It's just that little bit of extra. I okay. mean, if, if you want cleaner video, put it in. I, to be honest with you, I mean, it's one of those things, I, I beat the hell out of the quad sometimes, so. Okay. Is there any care. any downside of installing it, besides it? Um, I mean, I guess, technically, you could get damaged and short somewhere right. you know, across the terminals. Um, but if that's happening, your quad's probably in pieces. <laughs> yeah, I mean, where we installed it, it's not exposed and all that, so it shouldn't be in much of an issue. Uh, if you got the time, install it. If you don't want right. to, you don't have to kind of thing, but it can clean right. up your video a little bit. So don't get video noise confused with just a poor video wrong channel. Wrong channel. channel. So or if some, you're supposed yeah. to be on Fat Shark 1 and you're running on Fat Shark 1.1, 1. 1, Yeah, whatever. It's, not, it's not like adding a capacitor is going to make a 25 right. milliwatt section, uh, selection make it perform like an 800. Right. No, it's, it's not boosting any performance. It's just cleaning up any... Uh, uh, our back back feed noise from the motors and all that right. to the video. All right, so as we stated in the beginning, if this video gets 100 likes, will it will do a video against his will on the GT M3. Now so the real question is, uh, comment: Do you want Spectrum or do you want uh, Free Sky install? Oh, there you go. All right. Um, remember, he said Spectrum, not me.